trust your first impression. What do you see in your mind's eye? I'm under the willow tree. Mm -hmm. I'm under the willow tree. Tell me about this willow tree. What do you do there? It's my safe place. Mm -hmm. I sleep under the willow tree. Mm -hmm. Tell me more. It's where I go to be safe, to be alone. Mm -hmm. So what brings you to the willow tree today? What information is at this willow tree? This willow tree knows my origins. Mm -hmm. What are these origins? Where are you from? It's a place I have to jump. Mm -hmm. Each time I jump, I jump higher. Mm -hmm. Do you have a body when you jump? I'm not sure I think so. Mm -hmm. So let's take a moment now to see what type of body you have that allows you to jump. What do you envision yourself to look like? It's me as a little girl. Mm -hmm. But I'm not really in my body when I jump. Mm -hmm. Body is still under the tree. Very good. So let's find out now what happens when you jump this time. I let's fly. Go. Let's see if you can fly even further than before. Allow this to happen now. I am afraid to leave the safety of the willow tree. Mm -hmm. Let's ask the willow tree if it would allow it to help you with this jump. I'm afraid I'm going to fall off. Mm -hmm. Now if you jump, where would you fall? Out into the universe. Mm -hmm. Let's find out why you have this fear of falling off. Has this happened before? No, because I was always too smart. Mm. Well, today I'm with you. And there's no way that I'll let you fall. Would you allow me to go with you? Yes. Very good. So I'm going to now go with you as you jump. And I'll be right by your side. So go ahead and tell me what we need to do to jump into the universe. We're sitting, we're sitting on the edge of a black hole. Mm -hmm. I can feel my feet dangling into it. Mm -hmm. What do you see around this black hole? Stars. Stars. Lots of stars. Mm -hmm. And why have we gone to the black hole today? What's there? Knowledge. Knowledge. Very good. Are you ready to find out some knowledge today? Yes. All right. So let's begin. I'm going to count from one to three, and together we'll jump on the count of three. One, two, and three. Be there. Oh. Mm -hmm. What do you see? Oh. What's happening? I'm floating. Mm -hmm. I'm right behind you. It's like I have no weight at all. Mm -hmm. I'm just floating. How does that feel to float? Feels good. Mm -hmm. There's no weight to me at all. It's almost like 
There's no body anymore. Mm -hmm. So now that you don't have a body, let's find out where we need to go to find this knowledge. Where do we go to next? It's like a garden. Mm -hmm. Describe this garden for me. There's lots of sunshine, mm -hmm. but it's not sun, but it looks like sun. It looks light. It's, it's brighter than sun, but it doesn't hurt me. Just lots of light, beautiful flowers and grass mm -hmm. and paths. And there's lots of other people here, but... What do they look like? Some are very, very tall. Mm -hmm. Some are very small. They're wearing white gowns. But it doesn't look like they really have a body. Mm -hmm. What about you? the observer of these beings. What do you look like here in this garden? <laughs> Just a beam of light. Ah, what color is this light? White. Mm -hmm. So as this beam of light, you can go anywhere. Yes. Let's find out where this knowledge is in this place. I see the building of knowledge. Mm -hmm. It's very tall. It has Lots of windows, but it doesn't really seem to have a structure to it. It's strange. Mm -hmm. What's it made out of? I don't know. It's almost like... It's almost like it's there, but it's not there. But it's like... Um, almost like a skull or something. Mm -hmm. But it's... The way it's made is strange. What color it's is it? It's almost like it moves. It moves. Hmm. Yeah. It's like it's flexible. Hmm. It doesn't, it's not made of steel and iron the way our buildings are made mm -hmm. now. And what color is this structure? Does it have one? It's white too. Mm -hmm. It's a soft white color though no. to define it against the light. Mm -hmm. So how do you get inside of this building of knowledge? Easy. You just fly in. Mm -hmm. So let's see. There's no windows or doors. Let's see where you go. Allow yourself now to be in the building. I'm looking for an elevator, but there doesn't seem to be one because I want to go upstairs. Mm -hmm. Well, let's oh, see if you can... I'm there. Uh -huh. I just have to think about it. So your intention takes you to where you need to go. Yes. What's upstairs? This is a class, like a classroom. Mm -hmm. There's places... There's places to sit, like desks. And there's somebody at the head of the class. Let's find out who that is. Uh, teacher of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Was he expecting you? Yes. Mm -hmm. Who else is in the class with you? Just me. All right, so let's find out what the lesson is today. He says you're here to learn your path. Mm -hmm. What else does he say? We're here to remind you of your choices. He says, you are where you are supposed to be. 
you are mindful and curious. Mm -hmm. He tells me not all things are to be known in advance. But we can share some things. What are we here to share today? The questions you have of your light language. Mm -hmm. Is he willing to give you the answers today? Yes. Very good. Now the question that she brought here today was one that we haven't seen already, which is about past lives. Are you willing to share information about her past lives? Yes. Mm -hmm. so she wanted to know which past lives she's had that most relate to her current life in her use of the light language. Can you show her a picture in her mind of this life? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's during Christ's time. Mm -hmm. Tell me what happened there. It's uh, very dusty. Mm -hmm. It's uh, the buildings are like sand, mm -hmm. like sandstone. They all have like rounded arches. The street is narrow. People are crying. They're very upset. What's happening? <laughs> it's Jesus. What's happened? <laughs> He's being beaten. Everybody, everybody's upset. <laughs> what are you doing there? <laughs> I'm with his mom. What is your name there? <laughs> My name is Mary. Mm -hmm. Mary, what's happening? <laughs> They're going to crucify my son. Next, Mary. <laughs> they didn't tell me. Who didn't tell you, Mary? God didn't tell me. God didn't tell me he would have to die this way. Does God tell you everything, Mary? I thought so. Mm -hmm. How does God communicate with you, Mary? He talks to me. Mm -hmm. So how do you feel now that he didn't tell you this? I understand. Mm -hmm. Because it was me to know. Mm -hmm. No mother wants to know that in advance. Do you? No. Mm -hmm. 
So what does God tell you now? <laughs> he says... <sighs> he feels no pain. He's protected. Mm -hmm. What about you? Uh, my heart... <sighs> My heart. <laughs> what happens next? He tells me he's not going to die. Mm -hmm. He's not going to die. He's coming back. Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel? Oh. Relief. Mm -hmm. Relief. How does God tell you this? I hear him. Mm -hmm. What else does he tell you? He wants me to know that my son's soul was created. Created for this. His soul was created for this. Yes. Mm -hmm. That it was a path he chose. It doesn't make it any easier for you. No. But he's going to live. God tells me that he will live forever. Mm -hmm. In the hearts of men <laughs> far beyond anyone's understanding at this time. What is your role in this, Mary? How is it that God chose you to be his mother, to endure this? I was favored. Mm. I chose love. I lived a life of love. And purity. And honesty. But it was not an immaculate conception. Mm. Tell me more. I was told I would bear a child. I was told the child would be the king of man. I was told that Joseph would be the child's father. But he would not play a role as a father does. Did you understand this, Mary? No. Do you understand it now? Yes. Tell me about what role he played. He planted the seed. Mm. And he fathered him. He fathered all my children. How many children do you have, Mary? Five. Mm -hmm. Three boys and two girls. What are their names, Mary? Uh, Joshua and James. Anna. I think I think two of them have passed. Mm -hmm. One child, Bale. Mm -hmm. I think we called him Peter. Peter is the name I hear. Mm -hmm. 
the hair. Madeline. That doesn't seem right. Mm -hmm. So let's find out some more, Mary, about your communication. What does God tell you now? Just like Jesus, I will be born over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. That we all have and will have eternal life. Mm -hmm. Eternal life. is like a secret. Mm -hmm. Tell me why. Because people don't accept it. People feel that A body dies, that the soul goes with it, mm -hmm. but it doesn't. So Mary, I'd like for you now to close that scene and let's go to the last day of your lifetime. <sighs> Tell me where you are. I'm in bed. Mm -hmm. Who's with you there? James. Mm -hmm. Tell me what's happening. He's telling me I can leave. Mm -hmm. He's saying he lived a very long life. He's honoring me. Mm -hmm. So Mary, take your last breath in that lifetime. Allow yourself to transition out of that body. And as you leave that body, <sighs> tell me what happens. I'm truly home now. Mm -hmm. Who's there with you? Joshua's here. Mm -hmm. Peter's here. Margaret. Margaret. Source. Oh my. It's like, it's like a, I'm a piece of God's source being placed back in to where I came from. Mm -hmm. Like a piece of the puzzle. <sighs> How does that feel? So much greater. Mm -hmm. So, Mary, as you're now reconnected with God's source, how are you influencing the life of Linda? Her work. How do you influence her work? Love. Love, Linda loves like I loved. Mm -hmm. Has she met with 
challenges in her life to express that love? Yes. Mm -hmm. What else do you do? I guide her on her path. Mm -hmm. What is her path right now? To bring light mm -hmm. into the universe. As I am light and source, so is she light to the universe. Mm -hmm. She is a beacon of light. So when she is on this planet, how is her body distributing this light? She is a golden light for all to see. Mm -hmm. They seek her out. Spirits can find her very easily. Mm -hmm. What happens when the spirit finds her golden light? Many of them want to make contact. Mm -hmm. They also want to help in the ascension of Mother Earth. Mm -hmm. How are they helping? With their light. Mm -hmm. So she's a gatherer of light also? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, she also uses a light language. Yes. Can you tell me about that? She speaks every language of the universe. Every language that has ever been spoken, she speaks. Mm -hmm. For what purpose does she come into this incarnation speaking all these languages? To communicate. To send love. Mm -hmm. to awaken all those who hear her language are moved mm -hmm. are awakened she passes her ability on to them mm -hmm. she is like a pyramid It spreads out throughout the universe. Mm -hmm. Now, this use of this light language, is it associated also with the return of the Christ consciousness? Or is it the ascension? It is Christ consciousness mm -hmm. in itself. Tell me more about this. It is Christ consciousness that travels through her vessel and speaks. Okay. Now you've told her before that she's supposed to use this light language. Does she consciously know and is aware of what she's agreed to do with this language? Yes. Mm-hmm. So, did she agree before she was born to do this, or is this because she carries an aspect of you? Both. Both. Mm -hmm. What was the agreement, exactly? That she would be a beacon, she would be a light. Mm -hmm. That through her light language, abilities, she sends energy out into the universe. Mm -hmm. Once spoken, never returns. Mm -hmm. Continues to work. Whether she speaks her light language for herself or others, the power is still the same. What is this light language encoded in? What does it have? It has the power of Christ consciousness. Mm -hmm. So, All things are possible with light language. So when she's using this light language, can she heal? 
Yes. Mm -hmm. How does she do that? She doesn't quite understand that yet. Mm -hmm. That's to be revealed. Okay, not yet. Not yet. Mm -hmm. And is there a way that she can strengthen the impact of this light language? Or does she just transmit it? She is the vessel mm -hmm. that carries. There's nothing for her to do but allow it. Okay. And if she doesn't allow it, what happens? Does it weaken? No. 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 Never will weaken. No. Now, she's been told that um, she's learned from other incarnations as Enoch or as Metatron. Can you enlighten me on that? She has aspects of all. Okay. She has aspects of all. Mm -hmm. And Enoch was a messenger. Yes. Mm -hmm. So is she being a messenger now? Yes. Mm -hmm. And this light language that she speaks, is it different than any other light language? Or are there similar light languages? For example, is there a universal light language that she is projecting out? There is a universal light language. There is light languages from all who speak. Mm -hmm. Hers, however, is Christ consciousness. Mm -hmm. Okay. Christ consciousness is what heals the world. Not just the world, though, the universe. The universe. So why is it needed at this time? What's happening at this time that's so important? The awakening. Mm -hmm. Can you explain what this awakening is? We are awakening all the souls that have come at this time to be on earth the consciousness christ consciousness is being spread throughout the world in all corners of the world As the light language begins to be spoken throughout the world, it raises the vibration. Mm. It raises the vibration not only of the earth, but of the entire universe. Is that why all of these souls are here right now? Yes. Mm -hmm. And many, many of them who have not fulfilled their destiny are now returning back to source mm. and returning again as children some are coming as walk-ins mm. okay. some are coming as children for the next wave but many are leaving because they are not feeling their destiny. They're not committed to their path. Mm -hmm. So we are calling them home. They're coming home. How are these people coming home, these souls? Death. Death. Physical death. Mm -hmm. Will it seem natural to a person that they die? No, not always. Some take their own lives. Mm -hmm. Some of them are coming home because of mishaps, mm -hmm. sickness, okay, sudden illness. Many, many will be coming. Many will be coming from the, this new, this new flu that's going around. Mm. Many, many will be 
transitioning. This new flu, was it created for this purpose? No. But it's being used. Mm. Who's using this flu? Source. Sources. To call home those. So, so it's divinely guided? Yes. Okay. So once we know that someone has died of this flu, it means that they have been called back home. Yes. Mm -hmm. And is the soul in agreement with this? Some. Some. Yes, but most of them are coming home because they have not fulfilled their destiny. Okay. They're... I don't know how to explain it. It's like Linda is fulfilling her destiny. Others are caught up in They're showing me something. It's like I have light and I have dark and they're merging together. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? It feels, it feels like they're trying to tell me that many souls who will be returning uh, are caught up in the dark. Mm -hmm. And like they've lost their way, okay. they've lost their purpose. Mm -hmm. So once they get home, do they see what's happened and return? They're given the opportunity to come back mm -hmm. and finish. What happens if they don't take that opportunity? What happens to them then? We won't really know until they come back, mm -hmm. because while they're here, they see. But why they were here before they could see. What are they seeing? Before they came, mm -hmm. they saw, they planned their path, their destiny. I see. When they are here, those that are here now who have not fulfilling that path and destiny will go back. They will see that they were not. But because they always come back with free will, mm -hmm. they can decide to help or not. Mm -hmm. We hope they will. Now many on earth right now are wanting to go home. Huh. They don't want to come back. What do you tell them? <laughs> it's that's so cute. It's cute because when when we're living our life here on earth now, we are experiencing those things we created for our path. Many of those things are distasteful things, painful things with the human emotions and abilities to feel good, bad, and different. But when they go home, it just is. They view this life so differently when they go home. They understand that and are eager to return to learn more. Mm. So nobody forces them back? No, it's their choice. Mm -hmm. Always their choice. And they don't have to come back to Earth. They can stay or they can go to other universes. Mm -hmm. But when they have been here and go back to Source, most are very eager to come back. Hmm. When you're on Earth, are there helpers from the Divine Plane that help us? Yes. Can you tell me about that? When we plan our life, we plan out our path. Mm -hmm. There are helpers all along that path. Many of you call them guides. Mm -hmm. Some people are in touch. 
some people are not. Intuition is your guide. Everybody has intuition, but many don't recognize it as divine. Mm. But it is divine. And it is your guide. It's much of what you call higher self. Mm -hmm. How do you tell the difference between your ego and your higher self? Your ego is something you need. Everybody is on earth has an ego. You need your ego. But a lot of times people don't realize that they control their ego. Their ego doesn't control them. Mm. Your higher self is not your ego. Your higher self has had many experiences and helps you through those choices that you've made for this life. Your ego can't get in your way. Some people's egos are much greater than others. Does that hinder them in their progress? It can. Mm -hmm. What about Ascended Masters, Angels? How do they fit into our life, and especially in Linda's life? They're all around her at all times. Mm -hmm. Ascended Masters and Angels and Archangels are always there upon calling. Mm -hmm. One must only mind them, and they are there. If you have questions, they are there to answer. Mm -hmm. The angels surround Linda. They're always with her in all that she does. And they help with her ego as well. Hmm. What do they do when her ego gets in the way? They remind her that there is no control in life other than oneself. Now, as far as the Ascended Masters and the Archangels, have they chosen her, or has she chosen them? How is it working that she's channeling them? It was an agreement. Mm -hmm. When was this agreement? The agreement was for her work. There are many that do her work mm -hmm. on Earth at this time. She's not alone. We channel through them to impact those who we bring to them, for they too are workers. Mm -hmm. So she shares the responsibility? Yes. Mm -hmm. This is too large mm -hmm. a planet for only one worker bee. Mm -hmm. So is this one that she speaks any different than theirs? Or is she also are they also projecting the same beacon of light? They're each individual beacons. Mm -hmm. But they are yet the same. Okay. Now, you've already told her that the power that this light language has affects not only this world, but 
beyond. What connection does she have with the galactic life? Does this project out into other galaxies? Yes. Mm -hmm. There are many species Mm -hmm. who are working with awakening us on Earth. How do they do that? Many of them are being channeled through the light workers. Mm-hmm. And what is their message? It's the energy that we use the vibrations that they have helps us it helps awaken others okay so all of these light workers right now are all responsible for waking up the other light workers is that what it is yes Mm -hmm. so everyone's an alarm clock once you become awakened Mm -hmm. You become a worker bee, you might say. Yes. So each one who wakes up needs to wake up the others. Kind of yes. like a domino effect. Yes. Uh huh. Is that our responsibility to awaken others once we've awakened? Have we agreed to that? If it's your agreement, yes. Ah, okay. So not all of them no. do that. No. How do you know if you're one of the ones that needs to be this alarm clock for others? It's your path, Mm. and you walk your path. As your path unfolds, you see. Mm. So Linda has definitely seen how hers has been activated for such a long time. She's been here for that reason. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you've told her that it's going to be, um, this light language is going to be spoken in all corners of the earth. Yes. That the work has just begun. What happens then? What happens after this light language is spoken? What needs to be done? It's going to take many earth years Mm for it to flow but once it is completed is when we have what the book of revelations says ten ten thousand years of peace and love Mm -hmm. This is what we are striving for when the lion lays down with the lamb and the world and the universe are joined as one. When will this happen? Is there a time frame? Yes. Is that information you can share? What they're showing me is we're actually behind time. Uh Ah. We're not. Past time slowed us down, but now we're making up that time with the awakening of the light workers. Mm-hmm. Now, you said that this light language will be spoken. Are we saying that we are going to all be speaking this light language? Those that embrace it, yes. Okay. Is this something that comes naturally? 
Will it happen to people? Yes. Mm-hmm. Is there anything that you need to do in order to activate this light language? Light language activates light language. Okay. So as soon as you are in somebody's presence that is speaking this light language, it will activate it? It can. It can. Okay. Yes. Good. It doesn't happen right away sometimes. Mm-hmm. But it does happen. Okay. This is, this is what we want to accomplish. Very good. Very good. And we'll do that later today? We can. We can. Thank you very much. Now, she also wants to confirm that it, this light language raises the individual's vibration. Does it do that? Yes, Mm -hmm. but it's a process. It is. Like her awakening and your awakening. Yes, it took long. It's a process. Okay. So it's not automatic. It's not something that's triggered overnight. It's step by step. It can be. Okay. If the person is ready. Okay, good. What about expansion of consciousness? Will this light language expand your consciousness? Its goal is to bring Christ consciousness when one awakens they are bringing in Christ consciousness into their being Mm -hmm. they're bringing it into their physical being and into their soul the soul always knows Does that do anything to your physical body? When you receive this Christ consciousness, do do people feel anything? Some people have physical reactions to it. Mm -hmm. Some people don't. It just depends. So physical reactions, are they changing their bodies or uh, do they feel like vibrations, things like that? The most common thing that happens is ringing in your ears. Okay. So if you're hearing lots of ringing in your ears, that's what's happening. Yes. Okay. Almost all of my clients feel ringing in their ears. Yes. Uh That's one of the keys. What about vibrations in their body? The vibrations is what causes the the ringing in the ear. Okay. The inner vibrations. The vibrations vibrations are being lifted. That's why you're able to reach spirit and you're able to channel um, spirits Mm -hmm. because your vibrations have risen. Linda's vibrations began to rise when she began to sharing her her lie language with others. Mm -hmm. It brought up her vibrations. Her vibrations were and are unique Mm -hmm. in that she, she carried them for so long and when she reached the point on her path when it was time to reveal and to create and allow her light language to flow her vibrations rise all all vibrations rise when you allow the light language to flow light language flows in many modalities though not just in language what other modalities does this light flow in Art, Mm -hmm. music, dance, song, anything that's creative, music, dance, song, art, all all forms of art. These are all forms of vibrations. Mm -hmm. What about, for example, the sounds of nature? Oh, yes. What does that do to raise our vibration? Nature is the closest thing to Mother Earth. Mm-hmm. And when you sit in nature, your vibration can't help but raise. Mm-hmm. Do, we actually, do we actually hear something? Some people do. Mm-hmm. Some people can hear the vibration. Some people feel the vibration. Linda feels the vibration. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, you also said something about 
this, uh, this is the ascension of the earth changing. Are we actually going to be ascending with the earth? There's much confusion there. Mm -hmm. Can you explain that to me? The ascension comes from within. Mm -hmm. Each person who ascends from within raises the vibration of the earth. Some people are already risen into higher dimensions, but they're still walking in what is known as the third dimension, mm -hmm. but they're not in the third dimension. They're in a higher dimension. They're in a higher dimension by how they live. Okay. Do they it, see any difference? It's not a place. No. It's an attitude. Okay. It's how you raise your vibrations and see things from Christ consciousness view that changes you and ascend you. Okay. So what would be the best way to ascend, to change your vibration? What kind of attitude are we talking about? Love. Mm. Love and understanding that one does not need to walk another's path. They only need to walk their own. That's the hardest part for a human. Mm -hmm. Because of our empathy towards others? Need of control, mm -hmm. more likely. Okay. Which is part of the ego. Yes. So when we're trying to control our spouse, our job, our children, Yes. that's when it gets in, in the way. Yes. So it's much easier for someone to be sitting in a forest to ascend. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> than to be working in a... In a cubicle with... But that's not true either. Mm -hmm. It's all state of mind. Okay. So we need to work from within. Is that why they always say to meditate? Yes. Mm -hmm. That is your best friend, meditation. Mm -hmm. Now, can this light language be used to facilitate healing? Yes. In what way? The vibration. Set intention. Mm -hmm. Linda sets intention for her light language. If someone needs healing, they just need to tell her, and she sets her intentions for healing, soothing, many different, many, many different modalities. Mm -hmm. Has she done this healing in other lives? Yes. Mm -hmm. You only showed her the life of Mary. Are there any other lives? in which she's used this light language that are affecting her. Six. Six of them. Her last six lives mm -hmm. has been preparing her for now. Were they difficult lives, challenging lives? Yes. Mm -hmm. So can you tell her a little bit about it without her going needing to go deep into it? She was a victim of the Salem witch hunts. Mm -hmm. She and two of her daughters were healing, doing healings. Mm -hmm. What kind of healing was she using? Same thing? Crystals. Okay. What happened? Crystal healings. We were in a, looks like a cave or something like that. It's very dark, like we're hidden. We have, there's torches that are lit for light. There's somebody laying on the ground. My daughters are with me. They're like teenagers. Mm -hmm. I'm teaching them. 
we have crystals and we're praying. I'm speaking light language over the body. It's a man. It looks like he's been brutally beaten. It's not a sickness. What do the crystals do? Energy. Mm -hmm. We want them to disperse energy for healing, to heal his body. What happens next? They're coming. We're trying to grab him. We're trying to pull him into the cave, further into the cave. We can hear them screaming and shouting at us. I jump in front of the girls. I tell them to run, run, run. You can now watch it as an observer. Set yourself aside from that body and watch it from behind. What do you see? They're grabbing me by the hair. Mm -hmm. They're dragging me. Just watch it be an observer. <sighs> Stay out of your body. <sighs> they have the girls. <sighs> There's other people. They're gathering other ones. And the workers. Mm -hmm. Do these work with you? <laughs> they do the same thing. They're trying to help people. They're trying to help them. They're trying to heal them. They're calling us witch doctors. <sighs> they throw us all in a pen. There's 12 of us. It's like a metal cage mm -hmm. forged of steel. Mm -hmm. It's black, very heavy. I'd like for you to observe it from afar and tell me what happens. They just left us there. There's people watching us, throwing things at us. The townspeople. Are you indoors or outdoors? Outdoors. Mm -hmm. They're yelling at us, calling us names, telling us we're going to burn in hell. They don't realize we're doing God's work. Let's go to the last moment of your life in that lifetime. Close the scene and let's go to the last moment. What's happening? Watch it from afar. What's happening? My have is tied. We're tied to a stake. Six of us. My two daughters. for you now to advance the scene and just leave your body. Go to the moment when you left your body. 
Oof. And now you can look back at that life. Oof. What was the purpose of that lifetime? Oof. Oof. All things are worth fighting for. Mm-hmm. All things are worth fighting for. Yes. Do you feel like you fought for what you believed yes. in? Yes. Mm-hmm. Did you learn any lessons from that lifetime? I learned that I was powerful. Mm -hmm. Did you make any promises or vows? No. No. Do so you allow yourself to leave that life behind and reunite yourself with your family again? Yes. And tell me what happens once you reunite. Huh. What do they tell you? They're all hugging me. We're back with Source again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My daughters tell me they'll travel anywhere, anytime with me. Mm -hmm. So let's find out, these daughters, are they in the lifetime now, Linda? Do you recognize these souls? No. No. So now let's find out the next lifetime that impacted Linda. Would you show her that lifetime? We need to take a break. All right. So I'm going to now tap Linda's shoulder. She'll be able to open her eyes. She'll remain in a deep trance. And when she comes back, we'll go even deeper. Go okay. to the next lifetime. Eyes open. Wow. You did great. You are reunited with your family, with Source. Oh, my heart. Mm -hmm. oh. What's happening now? So much love. Mm -hmm. It's so much love. I feel like my heart will explode. Are they telling you anything? Yes. Mm -hmm. What do they tell you? My work has just begun. I did well. Why did you choose such a challenging growth opportunity? That's how she flies. Mm. <laughs> so what happens next? What is she planning to do in the next lifetime after Salem? I'm in Wales. Mm -hmm. What year is this? I don't know. What's happening there? I don't know if this was before or after Salem. Mm -hmm. I keep hearing 14. Is this the 1400s? Yes, I keep hearing 14. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm a young girl. Mm -hmm. Tell me more. Where are you? I'm not happy. What's happening? <sighs> My mom. Mom died. My mother died. 
my I'm head. I'm awake. I'm awake. I know everything. I can see. I can hear. I can feel. I feel like I'm going crazy. The voices won't stop. What's happening? What's, what are these voices? Uh, everybody's... Everybody... Everybody who's crossed... Spirits everywhere. They're everywhere. My dad. My dad. My dad doesn't treat me nice. What does he do to you? Uh, he made me... He made me... He made me his wife. Mm -hmm. He made me do mom stuff. I can't do this. How old are you? I'm 15. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm in the shed. I hide. I'm in the shed. I'm hiding. Oh, it won't stop. It won't stop. It won't stop. What's not stopping? All the voices. What do they tell you? They're just crying and screaming for help. It's just like they want me to cross them over, but I don't know how. It's like they're stuck. Their spirits, they're stuck. They haven't crossed over. And they want your help? They want me to help them, but I don't know how. <laughs> I don't know how. They don't want to hurt me. They want me to help them. And they're screaming at me to help them. What do you do? I'm asking my mom to help. I can't find her. I can't find her. Everybody else is here, but I can't find her. I keep banging my head up against the wall, trying to make the noise stop. So let's close that scene and let's let's go to the next important scene of that lifetime. Let's go to the next important scene. What happens? Standing at the cliff. Mm -hmm. I know my relief is at the bottom of the cliff. I'm going to jump. How old are you there? I'm still 15. Mm -hmm. What happens? I know that there's peace. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. I want to go and come back. I want to go. I'll come back, but I want to go. I can't do this. It's too hard. It's too hard. I'm going to jump. Allow yourself to leave that body and tell me what happens. I can feel myself floating. Mm -hmm. Where do you go to? My mother's waiting for me. Mm -hmm. What does she tell you? She tells me it's okay. It's okay. She says it's okay. She says I took on too much. It's okay. So we'll go with your mother and reunite with your family. And let's find out a little bit about why you took on this challenge. It didn't go the way I wanted it to go. Somebody else's free will got in my way. Mm. Who was that? My father. Mm -hmm. He didn't understand my gifts. He didn't understand my abilities. They weren't gifts, they were abilities. Mm -hmm. They're never gifts, they're always abilities. My mother understood. She protected me from him. I think she got sick and died. She tells me she got sick and died so I could get out of that life. 
She took the burden. Mm -hmm. So what happens next? Where do you go after you meet with your mom? We're going to a temple somewhere. Mm -hmm. What is this temple? Looks like a Muslim temple. Mm -hmm. People are praying and they're on their knees and they're like kissing, like they're kissing the ground or something. Mm -hmm. Where is this temple? It's in heaven. Mm -hmm. I'm in heaven. What is the purpose of this temple? What do you do there? My mom's showing me this. I think it's for my next life. Mm -hmm. Let's find out what the challenges of this next life will be about. What do you see in that next life? Injustice. Injustice. My next to overcome injustice. Mm -hmm. Injustice, not just for myself, but in humanity. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone that you're taking with you in this next life that will help you? My mother's going with me. Mm -hmm. We will be sisters. Twins. This is no place to be a woman. Mm -hmm. Much injustice. So allow yourself to acclimate yourself now into that lifetime. Be there now. Yes. Tell me what you see. Again, there's dirt everywhere. Livestock. But they ride it, they don't eat it. Mm -hmm. The milk. The cows are only for milk. Mm -hmm. What do you do there? Well, me and my sister were 11. We, uh, we have to wait on our brothers. We, we are like slaves. Mm -hmm. We work and work and work. Our reward is food. They keep telling us that they will have to sell us someday. The boys are more important than the girls. How does that affect you? I don't understand that. I don't know. I don't know what they mean when they say, sell me. Mm -hmm. So close this scene now and let's go to that scene where you are being sold. <gasps> Oh, they're taking my sister away. <laughs> they're splitting us up. <laughs> Where are you? In the market. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> they're taking <laughs> they're taking our robes off. <laughs> They're making us stand on clothes. <laughs> they took my sister. Someone bought her already. <laughs> I don't want to be without her. 
<laughs> what happens next? <laughs> My heart's breaking. <laughs> This is injustice. This is what it feels like. <laughs> They're fighting over me. They're fighting over you? They're fighting over me. What do they do? They're physically fighting one another. Because they... They, they both want me. <laughs> I'm only 13. <laughs> Allow yourself to fast forward through that scene and let's see what happens. <laughs> he took me through my Close at me and told me to put the back on. What happens after you put your clothes back on? He grabs me by my wrist. He's pulling me along. I'm trying not to go. I don't want to go. Where does he take you? Going down the street. Again, everything's dirty. Uh, my feet are bare and they hurt on the ground. Uh, he's practically dragging me. He's yelling at me. To hurry up. I see a wooden door. The handle is right in the middle of the door. It has a big ring on it. He has to turn that to open the door. The door squeaks. But the floor feels so much better under my feet. It's dirt, but it's soft dirt. Mm -hmm. There's a fire going. There's other women there. They're all looking at me. Their eyes are sad. They're looking in my eyes. like they're talking to me with their eyes. What do they say to you? They're sorry. They have sorrow in their eyes. They have empathy for me. I think they'd be angry at me, but they're not. I know what's going to happen. He throws me down with him. The older woman puts her arms around me. She sh me. Like a mother would. It's going to be okay, she says. You're going to be okay. He will take good care of you. How does that make you feel now that you have this woman at your I side? I feel better. Mm -hmm. I feel better. I know this is our life. This is normal. This is normal. All right. So let's close that scene now. Let's go to the next important scene of that lifetime. What happens next? I'm giving birth. Mm -hmm. 
Robin a baby. Notice what the other women had babies. How old are you there? Fourteen. Mm-hmm. The older woman tells me I did a good job. She's with me. Well, it hurts. Mm-hmm. You can observe it from the from above you. You don't have to be in the body. Watch it from beyond. Uh. She's telling me it'll be okay. She says she hopes it's a boy. We need a boy child. We need a boy child. She keeps saying, bring us a boy child. She says he'll be forever in your debt if you bring him. A boy child. What happens next? I give him a child. It's a boy. How does that feel? I'm tired. Mm -hmm. I'm just glad it's over. I have no feeling for the child at all. I want him to take it away. Let's see what happens with the child. Leave that scene now. Close it down. And now let's see what happens with that child. He gives the child to the woman. She'll mother the child. I still have to feed it. She tells me I have to feed the baby. She tells me I'm the only one that can feed the baby. How does that make you feel? I can be used again. Mm -hmm. It's like... I don't know. I don't understand why I don't have feelings for the child. Mm-hmm. Connect with those that child. I'd like for you to see that child. Look into his eyes, the eyes of the window to the soul. Do you recognize the soul in the life of Linda? <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. It's Linda's mother. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's why. I begin to soften. I'm feeding the baby. I'll do what I have to do. I don't have a choice anyway. The man is very happy. Very, very happy. He has a son. He tells me I must give him many more sons. I think I'm the only fertile one here. There are three other women, but none of them have babies. So let's close that scene now. Let's move to the next important scene of that lifetime, where it affects the life of Linda now. Be there now. Where are you? I'm 
outside, it's cold. How old are you there? I'm very old. Mm -hmm. What are you doing outside? I'm just... I have no purpose anymore. Mm -hmm. I think I'm 60, maybe 55. Mm -hmm. I can't bear children anymore. There's no use. I don't. Is that your purpose in life, to bear children? Yes. How many children did you have? Thirteen. Were they all boys? No. Nine. Mm -hmm. What happened to the other ones, the girls? They got sold like me. Mm -hmm. Promised to be fertile because their mother was fertile. I didn't attach myself to any of them. I feel ashamed. I feel ashamed. So let's close that scene now. Go to the last scene of that lifetime. Right before your death. Where are you? In the streets. I've starved to death. So leave that body behind. Take that last breath. And tell me who you meet with now. My first son. Mm -hmm. He was killed. He was killed in war. Did you have a bond with him? Do I have a body? Do you have a bond with your son? Yes. Mm -hmm. He's from my soul group. What was the reason that he chose you as a mother? in that lifetime. Huh. He said I was strictly the vessel to, for which him to come. Mm -hmm. huh. But he loved me for being that vessel. Mm -hmm. He says, I didn't ever know you as a mother, but I knew you were the one that gave me life. I thank you for that. How does that make you feel? Guilty. Mm -hmm. So let's find out what happens when you reach your soul family? Let's find out the purpose and the lessons of that lifetime and what your family has to say. The purpose was injustice. Mm -hmm. I lived a life of injustice. It will make me a warrior for future lives against injustice. Mm -hmm. So how is that lifetime affecting Linda's? In this life, she understands injustice. Mm -hmm. She understands now that she doesn't have control over it. Nobody does. Mm -hmm that injustice is just a much, as much a path as her life is. 
everybody chooses their path. And injustice is a choice that one makes on their path to experience, as I did. So we should not judge injustice? No, we should not. Okay. Very good. So you had a few more lifetimes in which this light language was important. What other lifetimes did you like to show, Linda, today? Are there any others? Where are you? On a farm. My parents are preachers. What country are you in? I don't know. Let me see. I think I'm in the United States. Mm -hmm. What's happening at this time? I'm sitting in church on a wooden pew. My father is preaching. My father speaks light language too. Mm -hmm. He delivers his sermon in light language. How do people understand what he says? He interprets it. Mm -hmm. He has the ability to interpret. He says he's speaking Christ's consciousness. And Joshua is speaking through him. What does he say? He's teaching eternal life. At that time, they believed that you had to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior in order to have eternal life. Where did that belief come from? I think it's true. It's just interpreted wrong. Mm -hmm. Tell me what the true interpretation is. Through Christ, our sins were cleansed. But there really is no sin. It just is. The interpretations are wrong. We come here with a purpose to have experiences. Sometimes our soul chooses what we consider darkness to experience light. If there is no knowledge of that which is considered dark, how can you see the light? There really is no right or wrong. There just is. So as you sit here in this place listening to your light language, what's happening? How is that affecting you? I 
I feel like I'm interpreting mm -hmm. the true meaning of Christ consciousness and love. What else do you hear about the Christ consciousness? That it lives within each one of us. That we are each a piece of the Christ consciousness. We are all one. My brother and my sister are me. I am them. We are I am. We are only here on earth to have experiences. When we cross back into our soul form once again, we are not. We are not disciplined. We are not chastised. We are not punished. We are loved. We are loved for being brave, for wanting to have the experiences to take home. So why did she choose this lifetime? What was the purpose of that lifetime? To feel the Holy Spirit within her. Is that lifetime still affecting her now? Yes. Mm -hmm. Did she have any other lifetimes after that one? That was a very short life. Mm -hmm. What happened to her in that life? She died when she was nine. She fell beneath the wheels of a wagon. Did she choose to leave at that time? Yes. Mm -hmm. Had she learned everything she needed at that time? Yes. Mm -hmm. What happened after that lifetime? Was there another one or was it this one? She had one more. Mm -hmm. Tell her about that life. Show her that one. She was a walk-in. Mm -hmm. She's a disciple. She walks in Amy McPherson. Mm -hmm. Is that who she is? Is she a disciple of Amy McPherson? Yes. Okay. Yes, yeah, she's not Amy McPherson. How old was this body when she walked into it? Old. Old. Mm -hmm. Somebody she looked up to, that Amy looked up to, mm -hmm. a mentor. Maybe her father. Mm -hmm. What did she accomplish as, as this walk-in? She established the work that Amy would do. Amy was a great evangelist. She was instrumental in guiding Amy on her path. Did they know each other? 
Yes. Yes. Souls. Mm -hmm. yes. They're only together for six years. And then what happened? He dies. Mm -hmm. He goes home. He's done. And she moves on to walk her path. Mm -hmm. Can you explain to me how a walk-in would come into a body while at the same time they're living a different lifetime? Mutual agreement mm -hmm. between the souls. Do you split up the souls to go into different lives? This soul left. You have an option. This soul wanted to leave. Mm -hmm. And so she took its place? Yes. Okay, good. So that lifetime, did she come back now, in this lifetime, to study under this Amy's work? Did she? She was touched by Amy's work. Mm -hmm. So it came full circle? Yes. Mm -hmm. Did Linda know, before she came into this life, that she would be using this life language? Not consciously, but subconsciously it's been the plan all along. Mm -hmm. Was there a reason why it happened when it did? At 12? Yes. Mm -hmm. What happened at that age? Much was before Linda mm -hmm. that was going to lead her on the wrong path. So, the intervention was made to keep her soul pure. So if she had not done that at 12, her soul would have gone a different direction? Yes. Okay. She would have been lost for many years. Okay. She would have eventually came back, but she would have been lost. Mm -hmm. Would have been wasting some time in learning? I didn't hear you. Would it have been taken a long, longer time to learn what she's learned now? Had she gone the wrong path? She would have had a very difficult life. Mm. Her life was difficult as it was, but it was not in as difficult had she not been slain when she was. Mm -hmm. Good. I have a question that was given to her about the keys of Enoch. Can you explain what is meant by this phrase? Keys of Enoch are the keys of one soul. Mm -hmm. Everybody has the key. How do we unlock it? Trust, mm -hmm. belief, and love. And today, Linda came with all of that, trust, belief, and love. Yes. Why did you bring her here to this session? What did you want to convey to her or to others? How oh, much she slumped. And that her love has no boundaries. Her love flows through the universe. Like snow on a mountain with the sun bearing down. It flows and goes where it's directed. Oh, that's 
what Linda needs to know. She needs to understand that what she does is blessed and filled with Christ's consciousness that one doesn't need to be a martyr. One doesn't need to be a saint. One, one doesn't need to be on a pedestal to achieve that which Christ has set forth for us all. She is touched by the angels. She has much work to do. We work with her. We will unfold her path as she continues to her last breath in this life. She will continue to raise the vibrations of not only the consciousness and Mother Earth, but to all who step into her energy field. She must only be there for them to receive words not need be spoken. She carries her light, the light of the Mother of Christ. Can there be anything greater than that blessing for any human? I feel blessed to be in her presence. And I know that the universe works with me to be able to help all of those around the world. Would you give all of those who are in her presence now a blessing? <laughs> No greater love than thee. No greater love than thee, no greater love than thee, has seen thy guy love gusa. Di sambagali hinda ali habumbembla didi. You have been blessed by the great ones. Thank you very much. Is there anything else that you would like to tell Linda today? Are we complete? We want her to know her higher selves are now standing at the forefront, 
knowledges she has been seeking will be revealed. We want to thank you for being her instrument as she so gracefully is the instrument for so many. You are her instrument. And we thank you. You are right. There are no coincidences in your lives. She needs to rest. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank her higher selves and all of those present here today, my guides and her guides, for this beautiful work. I thank you all. Wide awake now. Oh. Wide awake, feeling wonderful. All over. Welcome back. Oh. I'm still buzzing. <laughs> you and me both, my dear. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow, that was like a wave of... Uh... Take my hand. You feel the energy? Yeah, buzzing. Oof. I don't think my physical body has ever buzzed this much. Where it's complete from head to toe, mm. buzzing, ever. Unbelievable. Yeah, it What is. an experience. I'm going to get you some shungite so that we can ground you. Yeah. So, what do you think about all this? Wow. There you go. Oh, thank you. Sure. Ooh. So what do you think about this experience? I tried to get all your questions done there, but also get some more insight. Yeah, information. We, we had more yeah. information coming through than what was on that paper. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that was, that's the idea. I don't, yeah. I don't really like to have to go by these questions because everything flows so much better when you're yeah, and, kind of like impromptu. And I knew that was going to happen too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that, that was that little statement on that paper saying we're just going to go with the flow kind of thing. <laughs> that your expertise leads the way. Yeah, I tried to get as many. It's kind of awkward to. No, you did good. But, you did good. Yeah. So this was amazing, and uh, the physical part of Linda Lee wants to say shocking. Yeah. Very. Uh, never ever in a million years would I have ever thought that I was uh, Mary. Mary. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm still not sure whether or not we got the answer, whether I'm a full soul or uh, doesn't make any difference. It doesn't make any difference. No. We're all one anyway. So. Yes, that's true. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Unbelievable. I mean, you were feeling those emotions. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And these other lives that I lived, just wow. amazing pretty intense yes I think what we got out of all of that is we can't judge what anybody's going through at all no. it's not our place there's mm -hmm. no and that's where ego comes from ego wants us to judge things and, yeah. and to keep us uh, from being grounded mm -hmm. because being able to not judge and accept everybody at their value mm -hmm. with their flaws with what we as human think are flaws mm -hmm. and not allow ourselves to categorize other people because of what humans feel are flaws because mm -hmm. none of us are flawed we're all perfect in his sight amazing perfect in his sight so is this a shareable session oh i would think so <laughs> <laughs> i have to ask <laughs> I, I would think ask. if you think so, then I would oh, think so. Oh, that blessing at the end was, was enough <laughs> Wow! to blow me out of my chair. And the language I was speaking was coming from Christ himself. I've never spoken that heavy, deep. It's pretty deep. Yes. It's pretty... It was coming right from, I could feel it coming right out of my heart. It was um, very profound, and there were... Um, they're telling me to tell you there were gifts interlocking in those for you mm -hmm. 
as the physical physical <laughs> as the physical observer that you were yeah. for this session yeah. there is much for you wonderful thank you yes um they're showing me your path okay the, the way I'm seeing your path is a little different than most paths I see. <laughs> most paths I see, I, I just see a ruler, and they sh give me a mark on the ruler yeah. with that person. But you, I'm actually getting a path. <laughs> and I would be different with you. <laughs> <laughs> and on the path on both sides is an indigo blue neon light lighting up this path. And just like the, the sidewalks used to be, there is a, a square, and each square is lit up also in that indigo blue and they're showing me you stepping out of one out of one stone into the other stone and when you do it turns green hmm. which green for us as humans means go man go <laughs> <laughs> wow <sighs> I'm still buzzing, Alba. Well, I'm buzzing too. So <laughs> it's two of us. The energy just been absolutely amazing. I so much has happened that I didn't expect. I came here with expectations. <laughs> and <laughs> so what expectations did you come with? I I came with expectations of they've been so ground out that I don't even remember anymore. <laughs> <laughs> to have this experience is um, something each and everybody should have the opportunity to do, number one. Mm -hmm. um, and myself being a channeler and a medium, working with Alba has been fantastic. Um, she's just, she's such a sweet soul. I can just feel her all over me. She mm -hmm. is. Thank you. Um, I hope we remain good friends. Yeah. We live close enough together we can have tea and coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Lunch once in a while. Well, maybe we have to drive a little bit. <laughs> yeah, we, can meet, we can meet in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We can always meet in the middle. So you came with expectations and it's uh, different. It's, it's different because, um, number one, I've never gone this deep before mm -hmm. in, in uh, a session. I've only had one session really but <laughs> but in my own channeling i don't go this deep and in my own meditations i don't go this deep i've experienced i don't know five lifetimes in this session or six at least I, at least at least yeah i i lost count after a while <laughs> i'll have to count when we when we read yeah. it but um yeah it's, and they were very emotional yes very starting emotional. with mary yes uh it seems though i'm an incarnate of mm. Mary, mm -hmm. um, our beautiful Jesus mother. Um, I was taken back to the day that Jesus was crucified and could see and feel all the emotion of everybody that was there. Mm -hmm. And um, it was very painful, but I was also given a gift at the same time of understanding of mm -hmm. what his path was for us as humans, as mm -hmm. people here on earth, mm -hmm. and how he his soul path led him there and he agreed like we have agreed for our soul path we don't always understand it when we're walking that path <laughs> <laughs> but it unfolds and a little bit of that a, a little bit at a time we do get that message yeah and that's all we can ask for and at the end you actually were channeling yes i was channeling jesus joshua many people want to call him mm -hmm. i was channeling him. and that was pretty loud and he was very boisterous. Yes. And I could feel him in my heart. I have channeled him before, but not as strong. This was definitely him delivering messages. And for all of you that have the opportunity to listen to this, set your intention. If you have to go back and listen to this portion of it again, where I'm speaking in the language, please do set your intention for something you want to receive. And you shall receive it because it is coming from him. Makes me want to cry. <laughs> that was great. Oh my god. Yeah. So, do you recommend this? <laughs> I recommend this to anybody, yeah. everybody. Those who are channelers, please. Yes, definitely. You won't be sorry. 
at all. It's wonderful. Thank it's you. A, it's been a true blessing. Oh, you know, I'm, I'm so emotional. I mean, just being next to you, I'm getting the energy anyway. I usually, usually get very vibration, but this is very strong vibration. Mm-hmm. And I could just feel the, uh, I almost feel like this room is so crowded right now. It is. I feel like I'm being like, I do too. It's like you're being, there's just more in here than you <laughs> yes. have space for. <laughs> exactly. I feel like we're being squeezed. I think we have every angel that there is. <laughs> and this is a small room. Yeah. In but I do, feel, I do feel like the squeezing of like, there's got to be like thousands of them in here. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, I think we are definitely surrounded. Yeah, I feel it. I, my head is buzzing. Yes. So if you would like a session with me, I travel all around the world. Just go to my website, albowyman.com, go to the out of town page and sign up for my newsletter. That's the only way right now you're going to get a session. My calendar is closed until um, I put that newsletter out and they'll have links to my calendar whenever there's a, something available and do click on it immediately. Don't even hesitate. Don't, Don't hesitate for five seconds. Immediately click on it and uh, subscribe. Well, get that session in. And it is well worth waiting for. I'm telling you, mine was booked eight months in advance. And then I had a problem. So I had to actually cancel that appointment (laughs) and change that appointment. And I was fortunate to get one when I did. So it's she's definitely worth waiting for. I promise you. You will not be disappointed. Thank you. (laughs) So I hope you enjoyed this session. I certainly did. Until the next one, thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Thank you. Oh, man. (laughs)